missing opportunity facing us. Last week, this congregation celebrated water communion. This happens in many UU congregations in September. It's also called ingathering. People have been traveling all over the world and they bring water to share in a common vessel. Water and people gather from afar and begin a new church year together. This year, the world banned all travel from the USA. Metaphorically, Mexico, Canada, and all nations paid and built for a wall that kept us contained within our own borders. The virus keeps us from gathering in large groups. So this year, our in-gathering was virtual. We shared stories of how water is internal and spiritual. Through metaphor and memory, we started the new church year. When I was a child, the world began on the first day of summer vacation. I would run out of the elementary school down the grassy hill to my home, which was only five blocks from the lake, and we spent the days on the shores of the Great Lake Huron, or sometimes we would drive inland to the warmer waters of Lake May, or we would walk up Trout River and lie on a log bridge, looking in the shadows for fish resting there, and we would catch them with our hands. Akiak Falls was on the Akiak River, a little bit farther away from town. And it was the largest waterfall in the lower peninsula of Michigan. Despite this grand claim, it was only three or four feet tall, dwarfed by the 50-foot Tequanamanon Falls in the upper peninsula of Michigan. But in our waterfall, one could sit at the base and lean back into the falls and have the water rush overhead. And you were in this bubble that was magical with the sun glistening. You were underwater, but yet you could breathe. A sacred space behind the rushing waters. At night, there'd be moonlit fires on the beach, and our eyes would reach out to catch the falling stars. But children this year missed the annual renewal of summer. 2020 graduates missed parties celebrating their transition. They had not been inside a school for months. And yet, despite all of this, people made an effort to let those graduates know that they were important. They put signs up in their yards. And one day, I was just driving around killing time, and I happened to a neighborhood that was around an elementary school. And on that day, all the kids came out and stood on the lawn, and people drove by and waved and congratulated them on finishing their elementary education. So there was that creativity when our regular rituals of renewal were stripped from us, we came up with innovation. Spring is the most popular season of renewal. Flowers abound and Easter eggs and newborn grass symbolize rebirth. 
This year we were told to avoid each other. We craved connection. Amid this despair, a new ritual was created that spontaneously, it just kind of appeared in my Facebook feed and all of a sudden people were doing it. People placed teddy bears in the windows or in their yards. And then parents could drive around with their children and some of us adults who have yet stopped to stop being children drove around and looked for the teddy bears knowing that there was love and there was the willingness to hug even though we were currently forbidden to hug. And this brought solace to the young and the old. The only ritual of renewal that seemed normal this year was New Year's Day. This year I made my plans for 2020 anticipating all that would happen in this upcoming year, brimming with optimism. But this year defied all expectation. Death, economic shutdown, the worst fire and hurricane seasons in years. Exactly two years ago, New Bern was hit by Florence. F. That makes it the sixth named storm of the season. Today, Sally, the 19th storm of the season, is in the Gulf of Mexico. And two more are forming off the coast of Africa, and two are in the Pacific, south of Mexico. In 2020, our predictable life is gone. The lighthouses have burned out and no longer worn of the shoals. The signposts have blown down and are scattered along the way. And inside our homes, the seasons never change. This time of social distancing and quarantine has been like returning to the womb. We have to prepare for a rebirth in a post-COVID-19 world. And part of that is hoping that there will be a post-COVID-19 world. What dreams will we put into action? What changes will need to be made? What can we do now to prepare for the unknown. <clears throat> Humanity has gone through many transformations and times of change are always difficult. What can we learn from our past? In Hinduism, the laws of Manu are 2,000 years old and they state, Ambrosia can be extracted even from poison. Elegant speech from a child. Good conduct even from an enemy. And gold even from impurity. This means that even in the worst of times, good things happen. The heroism of the medical staff has been inspiring. People's interest in justice and democracy has increased. We look around our houses and see all the things that we know we no longer actually need. And we realize that we need the people who we can't see. We need those relationships. When we remember to visit wild places, we realize that social distancing can bring us closer to the earth. Even a liar occasionally 
tells the truth about the coronavirus. You just breathe the air, and that's how it's passed. It's also more deadly than even your strenuous flus. Maybe people will hear and start to take precautions. 2020 has indeed been a time of suffering. The Apostle Paul gave this advice in his letter to the Romans. We rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. I often argue with the Apostle Paul, and I don't know if I can rejoice in my sufferings. But I do hope that I can learn from them. Paul says we can do this because God's love is poured into our hearts. And I think all of us, even those who do not believe in a God, can feel the mystery of love in our hearts. We are built to give and receive love, and it is just part of who we are. The longing for a better world for all people gives us endurance. We get in the habit of living in hope. We build character by continuing to look for the best, and our hope does not disappoint us. Because as the Hindu laws of Manu say, gold can be drawn from impurity. We are more likely to find good if we are actually looking for it. The first gold in California was easy to find. It was lying on the ground. Then some put in extra effort, stepped into the rivers, and panned for gold and found it flowing in the rivers. But eventually they had to dig and dig and they would look for quartz because the gold was too hard to find. But when they found the quartz, they would find veins of gold within the quartz and they had to break that stone apart to release the gold. Coronavirus 19 has forced us deep into the mine shaft. What is the gold that we are looking for? Is it a more just society? Is it peace of mind? Is it an end to racism? Is it health and wellness? Is it a caring community? Once we know the gold we are seeking, it is easier to work for it, and by working for it, we will find it. In the Dhammapada, Buddha said, By sustained effort, earnestness, discipline, and self-control, let the wise make for themselves an island which no flood can overwhelm. We in New Bern need to build or move into areas that do not flood. We need to allow a natural buffer zone between our rivers and our buildings. Out west, there is more sun than rain. Perhaps we should not build any more homes unless they are solar-powered and self-sufficient. We need to learn to live off the grid, for it's the wires of that grid that get blown down in the wind and cause the sparks which cause the fires. They spark the dry brush 
which burns the tall trees. This virus has shown us all the weaknesses of our health care system. People put out of work and losing their insurance precisely at the time they need insurance. What will we do about our health care system so that we are no longer flooded by pandemic? Racial inequity and violence have long been features of our imperfect democracy. We can no longer be satisfied with half measures. How do we destroy and rebuild a system so that it will finally provide equal justice under the law? The Quran says good deeds annul evil deeds. This is a reminder for the mindful. We need to shift our focus. If we focus on all that is wrong, surely it will overwhelm us. Because the problems are global and larger than any one of us as individuals. Let us focus instead on what good we can do. As individuals, we can increase our recycling, lower our carbon footprint, encourage 20 people to vote, send $20 to a political campaign, fire relief or hurricane relief, sew a mask, support a struggling small business, attend small group meetings, call someone who lives alone, do whatever moves your heart. Find that good that sustains you. Reverend Howard Thurman wrote, Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because the world, what the world needs is people who have come alive. So find the good that makes you come alive. It might seem trivial to others. It might be painting, creating beauty. It might seem to have no purpose, but it's those cultural artifacts that survive long after any of us are dead and let people know that there was a civilization, civilization here that had soul. What has this social distancing brought to life? Each of us must run with whatever insight we have gained. There is too much to do. Let's not set for ourselves tasks that we are not suited for. Let us renew ourselves by doing what renews our spirit. Trust that someone else will find joy in what we consider drudgery. Any good that we do adds to the good in the world. And as the Quran says, good deeds annul evil deeds. Create a stockpile of good deeds that you share with the world. Resist not evil, but overcome evil with good. Create so much good that the evil seems small in comparison. Eckhart Tolle, a modern day guru, writes, Any action is often better than no action, especially if you have been stuck in an unhappy situation for a long time. If it's a mistake, at least you learn something, in which case it's no longer a mistake. 
If you remain stuck, you learn nothing. Is fear preventing you from taking action? Acknowledge the fear. Watch it. Take your attention to it. Be fully present to it. Fears that are faced cannot sneak up on us, and they often shrink under our direct stare. Doing so cuts the link between your fear and your thinking. Do not let the fear rise up in your mind. Use the power of now. Fear cannot prevail against it. If there is truly nothing that you can do to change your here and now, and you can't remove yourself from your situation, then accept your here and now by dropping all inner resistance. The false, unhappy self that loves feeling miserable, resentful, or sorry for itself can then no longer survive. It's what Elizabeth Kubler-Ross described when she observed the dying as acceptance a reality that all of us are finite and yet anyone who's even an armchair physicist knows that energy and matter are not lost they may merely transform into one another Eckhart Tolle writes this is called surrender surrender is not weakness there is great strength in it. Only a surrendered person has spiritual power. In our current days, we must surrender all the illusions we had before the pandemic. We must surrender the idea that we are self-sufficient individuals and surrender to the fact that we need one another. And may that need lead to community. We are not in control of everything. We must surrender our illusion of omnipotence and focus on the power we do have. Know that sharing power increases power. We must surrender the illusion of racism that heretical doctrine present in the founding of this country, as it was in the beginning, is unacceptable now and ever shall be. Justice without end. Amen. Surrender to reality. Give no credence to conspiracy theories and fantasies of fear. Trust science and reason. 2020 has been a cocoon. We have found ourselves bound. Our old way of living is no longer possible. During this time, let us surrender our caterpillar lives to the transformation. Let us not crave a return to normal. Let us strive and surrender ourselves to being better. Let us learn to fly. May we bless and be blessed. Let us now join in singing Blessed Spirit of my life, led by Mary Shepherd, accompanied by Judy Harrison.